you uh, must be very interesting, and by that I mean you, in the last few years particularly, have had a real challenge in facilitating and bringing people together and communicating with them, uh, particularly in bringing all of those models together at GM, just as an example, and, and seeing that design process go. Can you comment about the importance of personal communications and how yeah. you've learned to be so effective in communicating? Um, I've always had a, a strong desire to teach, and um, I always like to lead by convincing people that what my, my way is right. So, uh, in one sense, you could say I waste a lot of time explaining why I'm asking for what I'm asking for, but I think in terms of changing behavior, it's an investment rather than a waste of time. Because if you're senior, uh, you can say, I want it this way, and I, and I don't have time to explain to you why. And you'll get obedience, but it won't be a positive conviction obedience. It'll be a grudging obedience, and therefore, when you relax, it'll go back to, it'll go back to the old way. Whereas, if you take the time, explain to people what it is about the old way that hasn't worked. Give them examples of the old way not working. And then, based on experience, be able to give them a vision of a better way and examples of how that better way has worked in the past. Now, and then, they are, they are now willing to, to, to go along with you and try it once. Then that once is successful. Now you've changed the behavior of the system. And uh, that is really one of the things I, I am most proud of is that in the roughly nine years that I've been back at GM, I, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that I have been successful in completely changing the culture of how General Motors goes about product development. I mean, radically, radically, from a sort of a mechanistic, metric-driven, uh, if it's good enough, check the box, and it'll be good enough to sell mentality to a passionate, only the best product will win, only the best product will win. We've got to have the best interiors. Our, our interiors have to beat anybody's interiors. Our body fits and finishes have to be better than the best of the Germans. Our road behavior has to be better than, than the best in its class. So there's ever since we've, and now the system can't behave any other way. And uh, one of the nice things about Ed Whitaker is he uh, asked about the mission of the company about two or three weeks ago, and we um, discussed it around maybe a group of eight or ten of the most senior people. And we said, well, we think that the most important, most important single ingredient in the, uh, in the success of an automobile company is fo a total focus on the product, total dedication to the product, and creating the world's best cars and trucks, because if you get that right, uh, you will create shareholder value, you will be successful in the marketplace, and it kind of takes care of that, encompasses all these sub-goals that we used to have. And he says, well, makes sense to me. Do you all agree with that? And we said, yeah. And he said, okay, then the official mission of the company is to design, build, and sell the world's best cars and trucks. you all agree with that? Yep. So, the fact that that is emblazoned now as the mission of General Motors. And Ed Whitaker, when he walks around, he asks people what the mission is, and he wants to hear that. Um, I think that is a, a very good sign that the culture has shifted radically over the last 10 years. 10 years ago, if you uh, asked, um, we had a list of corporate priorities list of corporate priorities began with something called One GM. Okay? <laughs> now what? Then it was sense of urgency. Well, sense of urgency isn't a goal. It's an enabler. 